My name is Mr. Chipman, and I am the biology teacher at Murray High School. I teach honors biology, typically to freshmen, and I teach AP biology from sophomore to senior. And I have also taught zoology and anatomy and physiology in the past, and may teach them again. Who knows? And so in this video, we're going to be looking at five ways that you can prepare for my honors biology class. Uh, this is assuming that you're taking it as a freshman maybe, so you're coming over from the middle school, or perhaps you're taking it as a sophomore, maybe you've decided you want to uh, go into the honors program, which is uh, a fantastic decision. And so this is five ways for you to prepare um, for my class. And so the first way is that you should do your research. What does that mean? Well, uh, a couple things. So uh, this doesn't mean that you need to go out and learn biology by any stretch of the imagination. That's what my class is for. Um, but it wouldn't be a bad idea for you to begin familiarizing yourself with what I teach in kind of the course of the year. Um, I have a website, and you can see there's just a still from that website. It's uh, chipmanbiology.com. And if you click on the button that looks like that button there on the picture, Honors Biology, it'll take you to that website. Now, currently, I have last year's curriculum up there, and basically what that means is their entire schedule for the year has been posted. And so there will be, I'll take that down, but this year's syllabus and some other important links will be available there. And so you can go ahead and start reviewing that material, which is not a bad thing. Again, you're just kind of, this is what I'm getting into. It's a good thing to know what you're getting into. Uh, another way that you can do that is by looking at my YouTube uh, site or my YouTube channel. So on my YouTube channel, I post videos like this one, and I post videos of all of my classroom lectures. My class is a lecture-based class, and so by um, familiarizing yourself with this YouTube channel, you will be able to like know where lectures are located if you need to go back and review it, or if you missed a day of class and you need to get the notes, this is a great place to do that. And so familiarizing yourself with my YouTube channel would be a great uh, asset for you. In fact, you should go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel because then as I am creating new videos, you will get those updates and you'll see. And because a matter of fact, I'm going to be creating my entire honors, recreating my entire honors curriculum this year. So as those new videos drop, you'll have access to them immediately. And so I encourage you to check out my website, um, check out my YouTube channel, subscribe to this channel, like this video, help me out by doing so. I'd appreciate that. And so that is the first step is just to do a little research on the front end. Secondly, you need to gather your supplies. Now we, at the high school, we typically don't have like a list of, you know, supplies that you need to bring like you do at the middle school and the elementary school, which is, you know, this, this big list of Kleenexes and all this other stuff that you, for my class, you need pencil and paper ultimately. Uh, this can take several forms. I do not recommend getting a composition notebook, which you're familiar with, I'm sure, the kinds that are all bound on one end. Some students are taught to use those uh, in middle school, and uh, I don't recommend them just because they limit you a little bit, And um, whereas a spiral notebook allows you to tear pages out. Uh, and I even more than that recommend getting a binder and getting loose paper, and so you can move paper around, you can change things around, um, and so that gives you more options. Uh, it gives you a better way to keep up with things. You're less likely to confuse it with your other work. And so I, I, I recommend that. I don't require it. Um, I, all the materials are recommended because I don't require that you do anything as far as, uh, as that's concerned. But uh, I do recommend that students come to class each day with paper and a pencil ready to, to work. And so that is the basic supplies. We'll probably need a few other things, maybe a calculator, but a lot of times I use let students use their phones. Maybe you want a highlighter or something like that. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, to succeed in my class, you just need a pencil and paper. Another thing that you need to do is you need to develop a routine. Um, routines are an important part of successful people. They, they know when they're doing things. They know why they're doing them at that particular time they have organized their life. Their life is not happening to them. They are happening to their life. And so this is a good, this is an important time to do this when you have so few things going on. And you may think, well, I've got so much going on as a high school student. You really don't. Most of your life is just revolving around you, 
right, around the things that you're doing and the things that you have to keep up with, which is fine. That's a normal part of who you are, and it's a normal stage for your current age and so forth. But being able to organize those things, okay, so you're in band or you play football or whatever, you have to organize that around your classwork, right? Uh, And so you have to decide, and that's going to go with some of my further points as well, you have to decide when you're going to do things and on what day you're going to do them. Uh, I don't have a separate slide for that, but what I encourage you to do is decide, okay, so every day at 4 p.m., I'm going to go home for my practice or probably get off at 5 is more realistic, and I'm going to go home and I'm going to rewrite my notes for 30 minutes, which is all it would take. It wouldn't even take that, honestly. Uh, Or every day during six period, because we get finished 10 minutes early every day, I'm going to reread my biology notes. Um, and that, that 10 minutes would be 10 minutes well spent because if you spend that over the course of an entire unit, you will have put in about two hours of work into my test, which is good enough to make an A on any one of the tests that I have all year. And so just a simple sitting down, allocating specific time on specific days is going to set you up for success more so than if you just kind of randomly hope it all falls together. Uh, random is never good. Uh, success, successful people don't do random. They, they have a plan for everything they're doing. Uh, if, you, if you think of a successful student, uh, they're not doing random. They're, they are um, on purpose about their activities, and so I encourage you to have a routine. The second thing you need to do is be prepared to work. So what do I mean by this? You're getting ready to get into an honors level course, and so it's going to take a little bit more work than probably what you're used to for a normal course load. And so I encourage you to do a couple things. What this picture is uh, trying to denote is uh, reflecting on your past. And what does that mean? Well, uh, you're going to bring with you a particular attitude towards school. You're going to bring with you a particular work ethic. You're going to bring with you a particular set of values. And so you need to reflect on those. And that's gonna, it's going to go hand in hand with the next thing that I'm going to mention. So you need to decide, okay, so this is going to be an honors class. Then what do I, what do I want to do? You know, I, I encourage you to be honest about your weaknesses, which is what this picture is kind of denoting. Everybody has weaknesses. Weaknesses are a normal part of the human condition. And so you have to be honest about them. Well, I tend to, uh, you know, here, I'll give you an example of my own weaknesses when I was a high school student. My weakness as a high school student was I tended to rely on my intellect and didn't really work hard, which was not a good plan for the future. That's why I spent six years as an undergrad, because I didn't really learn how to work. I uh, started making bad grades as an undergrad and didn't really know how to react to that and how to improve. I never learned to, to work when work was easy at the high school level, and so I suffered at the next level for that. And so come in being honest about your own frailty. Be honest about the things that you're good at too, which is a good thing. It's good to know your strengths and your weaknesses. Therefore, you can prepare a plan when it comes to the class. And I can help you, especially as the year gets on, and I'll learn more about you guys. Uh, Ask, Mr. Chipman, what do you think I need to work on? I'm always willing to have that conversation with a student and and help them succeed in my class. And lastly, what should you do um, concerning my class is that you should think to the end. You should consider the future. You should uh, start with the end in mind. So you should have a goal. I have a picture here of SMART goals. You've probably heard of these specific, measurable, attainable, um, what's the, what's the R, <laughs> relevant, and uh, time, time bound, so or timed. And so what does that mean? You have a specific goal. Well, my specific goal is I want an A. You know, I want a good grade. That's not a specific because then what does good mean? You know, and so I want something that's measurable. Well, my measurable goal is I want to have above a 95. I want a specific kind of A, right? Or I want an 89.5, which is the lowest possible A. Both of those are A's. So you just decide which one you want. I want something that's attainable. Well, you know, you alone know your ability, right? And so if you're uh, normally a, a B student and your goal is, to make a 100 in my class, you know, I maybe give two 100s during the whole year if I have 120 students. And so 
Um, that may be not an attainable goal for someone who's been traditionally a B student. And so have an attainable goal. Set, set something that's, that's reasonable. Have a relevant go, goal. What does that mean? Well, it's pretty simple for, for a class, right? It's relevant. You need to have a, uh, the goal needs to be inside my class and it needs to be relevant to the, to the work. And have something that's timed. By the end of the year, I want this goal. Or you could even set uh, more immediate goals. By the first midterm, this is what I'd like for my grade to look like. Um, there's, there's a lot of different things you can do this. Uh, if, if one of your weaknesses is turning work in on time, at the end of the first nine weeks, I would like to have all of my work turned in on time. These are smart goals. And so I encourage you um, to set goals that are reasonable for you, whatever that is. It's not reasonable for everybody to make an A100 in my class. It's not, that's not reasonable. Um, and so you, you may need some help setting those, particularly as I get to know you. I am really always helpful or am willing to help students who, who have those kinds of questions. Mr. Chipman, um, how can I set goals that are reasonable and realistic for me? And I, I'm always willing to help. And so please use, use that resource, I, I being that resource. Or if you have students or if you have friends who have formerly taken my class, I encourage you to to talk to them and they can be a helpful resource as well even though they may not remember much after the summer because the summer is a place where things go to be forgotten but that's beside the point uh encourage you if you like this video if you like this type of thing like this video subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss uh future content as i said earlier i'm going to be remaking my entire honors curriculum and so as new videos drop you're definitely going to want to be um, seeing those. If you're a parent and you're watching this, this is something that you can keep up with where your kid is in the class and understand where they, where they can get information from. I try to make my information as transparent and available as possible. And so if you ever see a hole in there, you can say, Mr. Chipman, I wish this sort of thing was available. Then we can see what we can do about that. If you'd like to contact me directly, there is uh, my web, my email was located on my website, which I'll have a link below in the description. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your time.